brains are full of neural networks for everything we've learned how to do and for all of our experience, even the ones we don't remember, you know, are, are way too young to remember. And ego state therapy is a way of differentiating and or connecting these different networks in choiceful and hopefully helpful ways. In this video, Luna Medina Wolf and I are talking with Robin Shapiro about ego state therapy. Robin explains what ego state therapy is, why EMDR therapists need to know how to work with ego states, and how EMDR, ego state therapy, and somatic therapy integrate when working with clients with dissociation. Here's the interview with Robin Shapiro. Okay, then. Hi, everybody, and thank you for joining us. I'm really excited because we have Robin Shapiro in the room. I'm going to give you a quick intro about Robin Shapiro, even though probably most, if not all of you know her already. Uh, but Robin Shapiro relishes on uh, doing psychotherapy and spreading the word about healing trauma, dissociation, and disrupted attachment through clinical consultation, workshops, conferences, and her five books, of course. You can see two right here in the background the one we're talking about today. And um, there's also the uh, trauma treatment handbook and doing psychotherapy, a comprehensive trauma and attachment informed book for beginning therapists. Robin is known for her user-friendly interventions, humor and warmth. She has been uh, practicing ego state therapy since 1982 and mixing it with EMDR since 1993. She lives in Seattle with her really sweet and amazing husband, Doug Flummer. Um, and I'm really excited because I attended her training in October of 2020, and it really transformed my ability to work with trauma and dissociation. It really did, like completely. I felt so renewed after attending her training, and therefore I decided to continue hosting her for this amazing training about this book, Is the Ego State Interventions, that we're going to talk a little bit about today. Um, so... Robin, tell us, what is ego state therapy? Well, our brains are full of neural networks for everything we've learned how to do and for all of our experience, even the ones we don't remember, you know, are, are way too young to remember. And ego state therapy is a way of differentiating and or connecting these different networks in choiceful and hopefully helpful ways. Um, in fact, all of you might just go inside right now and find that kid part of you inside that maybe wasn't doing great way back when and bring that kid up to now. Show him your, you at your work doing a great job with a client. Show them where you live now. Show them the people in your life who adore you when, where it hasn't gone bad. Yeah, that's right. And you tell this kid that it's your job, your adult job, to take care of this child, keep them safe, keep them around loving, sweet people who may or may not be like the ones you grew up with, and um, let that kid know that they live up here now with you forever, okay? And hug that kid in, and that is the basis of ego state therapy, though there's a whole lot more you can do with it. Yeah, and I love that. I love holding my child in, holding that ego state in, and my therapist self is always the kindest one of all of my parts. So it's fascinating <laughs> when that happens, right? Um, 
Can you tell people, do you have to be a trauma specialist or a trauma therapist to utilize ego state therapy? Well, I think every therapist should be a trauma specialist because that's who walks in the door. So I think that people should know EMDR, ego state therapy, and some form of somatic therapy because they mix really well. We got two nods here from my people because they're all different ways to reach in and deal with that. So I think, first of all, every therapist should get training in these things. Secondly, you can still do ego state therapy if you don't have training in other traumas because there is there are several ways to work with trauma with ego state therapy. Um, even if something happened last week, there's a story I, I tell a lot in the training. I had a guy who could not do EMDR when he almost drowned two weeks before. He was a college student, he went swimming in the middle of the night with a bunch of drunk students and the, the moon went away, cloud went in front of it. So he was down under water and he didn't know which way was up. And he started swallowing water. His friends managed to fish him out and and bring him back to life. I mean, he literally died and they brought him back to life. And he could not take a shower after that. He was having flashbacks if he went to sleep, he had horrible nightmares. And somebody that he knew sent him to me. And we couldn't do EMDR because he couldn't settle down enough to even know he was safe right now. So I asked him the question, are you safe right now, this minute, aside from a little bit of water in this water glass, is there any water in the room that is drowning you? Right, am I gonna beat you up or hurt you? I don't think so. Okay, so look around, notice right now. And how long has it been? It's been like a week and a half. Okay, and this guy was a jock. He was a runner for the university. And I said, all right, I want you to take your strong body back a week and a half and fish that idiot out of the water and pull him right up to here before he drowns, right up to here and show him around. No water, you lived another week and a half, you made it, okay. Now I want you to, he's here, good. Now I want you to look back there again and notice if this guy is safe. You're safe right now. Look back there in the water. What feeling is there? Terror, okay. Grab that guy out of the water, pull him up to now. Through that week, it wasn't the most fun week and a half of your life, but show him all the way, all the way up to right now. Let him know he's here. And we did this about four times. And, and he, you could just see his body go like this. And then he's, I said, how are you doing? He said, it's over. I said, think about getting in the shower. I could do that. He was a swimmer too. I said, think about jumping in the pool. I could do that. I said, and he says, I'm such a fucking idiot. I said, I know. <laughs> what did you learn from this? And he said, not to go get drunk and get in the water ever again and never to swim on a dark night. Yes. Okay. So you're not an idiot anymore, are you? No. And then, because he was, I said, go with that. 
and we did a little bilateral EMDR stuff. And he was like, ah. And um, so that was good. Yeah. Can you guys hear that beeping sound? Yeah. Robin, I I have a question for you. Um, You mentioned the, the EMDR, the somatic piece and the ego state piece. And I, I know I, I, I am a great believer in, in the three approaches. EMDR is my main modality, but I integrate a lot of parts work and somatic work. And I think the sum is bigger than the parts. You get more when you integrate these three yes. than what you would have if you just, you know, hypothetically have, have them as separate modalities. Yes. I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about that, these integrations. Okay, so I was a student of what we called movement therapy back before there was somatic therapy about 40 some years ago. And um, when I went to therapy about 44 years ago, 43 years ago, I got ego state work. I went back and I didn't bring the kids up to now like I just did, but I went back and um, basically yelled at my parents and took care of my younger self. And it was, uh, and so I learned how to do that and and I took some trainings and it was part of the hypnotic training that I was doing back then. So I had both of those from the beginning. So then about 13 years later, I learned EMDR and it was always mixed up for for me. EMDR has a component of the body stuff in that you ask, what's your emotion and where do you feel it? But I will throw in more stuff during it. And what I find, and like many people, it all goes together. I'm going to pull another book off the shelf. You want to show a book, Robin? You want to go ahead and yeah. show us the book? Here is a lo- one of the nicest books about therapy. I happen to have written a foreword to it, Mm -hmm. EMDR Therapy and Somatic Psychology. It's by Ariel Schwartz, one of my favorite people in all of therapy, and Barb Mayberger, who I also adore. They wrote it, a lovely book about therapy, but also bringing these two things together. And they have a little ego state work in here too, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Ariel Schwartz is going to be our guest in June. In June 17th, we're going to have a I think you will love her. Yeah, we, we love her already. And we have, she has a new book. Um, so we will yeah. we'll talk about that book. And if, it, if you're on Facebook, you should friend her. She has the best photographs of her uh, beautiful. From Boulder, Colorado. Yeah, from Colorado. Yeah. And oh, we were okay. talking about the, that integration. You showed us um, Ariel Schwartz and Barb Mayberger's book. And we were talking about that integration of the somatic work. So we are a community of EMDR therapists. So Robin, can you talk a little bit about that integration of ego state into EMDR? When is it required? When do you use it? How does it help? Well, if you have to have it, if you are working with DID people, you have to, because otherwise you don't know who, what part of the person you're talking to. And EMDR only works if there is a dual attention. Okay. And if you do not have the adult living in 2022 who knows that it's safe, who knows it hasn't been sexually abused for 25 years or whatever, you know, and has a job doing whatever, you know, and seven children, 
you know, if you don't have that, you can't clear things. People who try to do EMDR with just this dissociated kid part that's stuck in the trauma, it can't work because there's no now now. And so one way that some people do it is they'll bring that kiddo that it happened to up to now, sit it on the lap or right next to the um, adult here and now part. They'll watch a movie of the bad thing that had happened and they'll both get bilateral, you know? So that's, that's a very simple way I learned many, many years ago. But there has to be the dual awareness in every EMDR session. And that's one way to get it with big dissociation. There's other kinds of dissociation. There's the derealization. Where am I? What's, what, what's going on? I'm just still kind of shut down completely, you know? And you have to be able to do the work to get the here and now. And from that old dissociated state and hold both to get that state moved. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious, Robin, in the book, you write that occasionally you're getting phone calls from consultees who are in the middle of a session with a client who dissociates and they don't know what to do with, with these ego states. What do you, what do you tell these people? What do you tell your consultees? who have a client's will. These are not my consultees. These are like strangers <laughs> who know that I work with. I have gotten phone calls from people in other states who I didn't know, but they know I know something about dissociation and eco states. And this is before I even wrote books, you know, and I got, I get this call and I do what I did when I met my first DID client in my office. The woman on the, our third date, she, I asked her something about her childhood and this 37 year old woman said, who are you? Where is this? And I said, how old are you? Four, and you don't know who I am? No, I'm Robin. And she looked really scared, and I said, I never hurt anybody. So um, I talked to this part for a while, and then because I had training in clinical hypnosis, I had kind of a clue. And I said, on the count of four, we're going to both clap our hands at the same time. And your grown-up part is going to come back in the room. And I was like, please, please. And, you know, one, two, three, four. And she was back. And I said, wow, that was weird. What are you talking about? That kid part, that kid that showed up, what are you talking about? Obviously DID. Both parties didn't know each other. And I was in my 20s. I had never, I'd been trained in cognitive behavior therapy <laughs> in college, you know, the other stuff I learned outside of there. And it was like, okay. And I explained to her, look at the clock. How did all that time pass? I explained to her what happened. I got a, I started buying books, going to trainings, got a consultant that I kept for about 30 years. David Kayla, wonderful guy. And I'm still, he's retired, but I'm still in a group with people I've been in a group with for 30 years. We just don't have, we just don't pay anybody to lead it now, <laughs> you know, to talk about these cases. But man, that's what you do if somebody shows up. You find their adult. I often, if they have kids, I'll ask them, When's your kid's birthday? And the adult will come back. Or, um, you know, 
they're a therapist. How long have you been in practice? What kind of clients do you work with? And it's like, you might just get that adult part back then. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, with that being said, right, like working with the association as EMDR therapists, do you think what percentages of the client that come into our office would be with some level of dissociation? Well, if you believe that one way of looking at it, PTSD is a form of dissociation. It is primary dissociation where you push away the bad thing that happened. You try not to think about it or go by that street where you had the car accident or anything. And you've got your, what they call the AMP, apparently normal part, goes to work, takes care of business. And then you have the bad dreams and the flashbacks and that goes with the emotional part. Then you have the next level of dissociation, which is uh, of your personality disorders. Those folks, they don't dissociate so that they completely forget unless they also have DID, but they have different parts. So, your narcissistic person is gonna have that part that I'm wonderful, I'm great, I never fucking make a mistake, don't argue with me, you know, and let me charm you. And then underneath that, the part they don't wanna deal with at all is the part that holds all the shame that they're busy trying to fight against. And your borderline is going to have that. You can't go on vacation. What am I going to do? No, I don't want to end the session right now. I need to stay here another five hours. You know, so you've got that part. You've got the fuck you. You're going on vacation. You don't care about me. And then you've got the you're going. Nobody cares about me. The dorsal vagal part. I'm going. Then you have your DIDs with a whole bunch of different parts, including the AMP that functions in front. Hopefully most people have that. And then the different ages that are tied to different things that hold the memories or hold the different roles they had to not deal with the memories. And those are all considered dissociation. So um, I know a lot of people always ask, what is the difference between doing ego state therapy with this kind of clients or doing IFS? Can you touch on that a little bit? Yeah, internal family systems is a form of ego states. I have had a little training in it and I really admire the guy who invented it, whose name is out of my brain right now. Dick Schwartz. Dick Schwartz, yeah. And... Um, but he has a very particular way of doing it that's different than mine. I, I rip off just about everybody else, you know, to do it and try to give credit when I know where I ripped it off from. He does his own particular thing, and he has a part, I think the self, that he really is sort of like the AMP, that he really has. And he does the trauma work differently. He just has the self connecting with different parts very strongly. I actually have like rescues and stuff like that. But there are 20 kinds, I'm making that number up, of ego state therapies out there. And we all make it different to fit the clients in front of us. That's if we're smart. And his is a very particular part and a lot of people do really good work with it. And the person who writes about EMDR, and that is Joanne Twombly. And she's really brilliant. Yeah. So, so Robin, we want to um, shift our conversation to open our conversation to our community members and to invite them to turn their videos on. Uh, and we'll do that in just a couple of minutes. 
uh, so they can have uh, an opportunity to ask you some questions or maybe we'll yeah. do a, a little demo. But before then, I wanted to ask you, you have a training in August. Uh, if you can tell our, you know, our community members who are listening or people who are watching it online, not at the time of the recording, what is in the training? How is it helpful to therapists? What are you teaching in, in this training? Okay, I teach very clearly what, what are ego states and how to work with them for just basic trauma, for um, kind of figuring out what part of you is up, how to work with, in couples therapy with it, how to work with people who are abused with it, um, how to work with personality disorders, especially borderline and narcissists with it. Um, I talk about the healthy ego states too. Interchangeable, choiceful, adaptable, socially engaged, profession, mom, caregiver, work, playful, nerdy kids that we may have, fun, activated ones, tired parts, and what it's for, understanding for client and therapist. I'm looking at my PowerPoint from that right now, getting the most functional part of the clients in executive control for work, relationships, all parts of life, healing trauma, and how to work with DID. It's mandatory for work with different levels. And um, I also talk about some other uses of it and that are kind of obscure, but people run into. Yeah. Okay, Robin Shapiro, thank you so much for your time. Okay, and then we're going to see everybody. <laughs>